Excellent. Well, uh, welcome back, people. Um, I just say hello from myself. I'm Paul Marshall C from the Outward Bound Trust, um, and we have an Outward Bound Campfire ch chat today with the delightful uh, Sarah Lowe, uh, who is a senior consultant for Psionic. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi, Paul. Nice to see you. I'm very well, thank you. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, so many of you uh, watching this might recognise Sarah, uh, Sarah from her days at Outward Bound. Um, she started working with Outward Bound over 10 years ago, uh, where she worked with the uh, young people from our education setting in primary and secondary schools, uh, progressing through um, in her role at Outward Bound to becoming a course director, uh, a facilitator uh, of early career programmes, and then eventually uh, was leading the uh, facilitational team at our Estelle Centre for all the apprentice and graduate work we did um, at, at that time, which was great. Um, Sarah event sadly left us uh, and went on for a great adventure where she walked from uh, John O'Groats to Land's End. I got that the right way around, I hope. You yeah. did, yeah. Um, and, and had just an amazing adventure, which I, yeah, I did see her on the time. Uh, so some truly inspiring stuff and, and some great reflections I know she had there. Uh, but she now, as I mentioned, is joining us in her capacity as a senior consultant at Psionic. Um, so Sarah, it'd be great just to get a little bit of a, you know, where you're at now in terms of with Psionic and what, what the role is that you're doing. If you can share yeah, a bit on that. Super. Actually, I just, I mean, I'd like to just pick up on that, that journey that I took, that transition from Outward Bound into Psionic, because that journey was really significant. We taught learning through adventure. You know, all the skills, the behaviours, the knowledge that we taught in Outward Bound. I guess I practised what I preached and I took myself off on this great learning adventure and put it all into practice. And through that, you know, I, I recognise my own growth. And so I find myself at, um, and, at Psionic, which has just been a really wonderful next step for me. And so Psionic is a, a financial services consulting firm. It's part of the Davies Group and our practices include um different services such as asset management, banking and markets, financial crime and compliance, private banking, wealth management, and learning and organizational development. And that's where I am. So I'm in the learning and organizational development team where I work as a senior consultant. And I guess part of what we do is we are, we build leadership and change behaviors at scale from senior leaders to early talent. And so an example of this would be technologists. So technologists working in the financial sector, um, we would train them um, to lead the delivery of tech solutions, not just be part of the development of tech solutions. So there's quite a shift okay. there um, yeah. in, in the approach. So the skills and behaviors that we might work on might include conceptual agility, influencing, creating business value, developing people. So sharing your skills and knowledge with the people that are working around mm -hmm. you to upskill and taking people from that point of delivering a product to influencing um the strategy and solutions within their organization uh, wow <laughs> that's quite quite a lot to be doing sarah that, that's fantastic um i i'll be interested then because i mean you started your 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 uh you kind of answered that question there talking about learning through adventure and that was very much with early careers professionals whereas now you're kind of clearly working with virtual global teams um so I guess what what uh, what parallels have you seen in that development piece uh, between those early careers and 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 these senior professionals and and, and project teams? Yeah, Do you know I think what, one of the things that I really brought to Psionic was much of the learning that I had I had developed throughout the band, and so I would say that some of the parallels were really in the design. So that building a safe environment for people to learn and grow and engage. Um, so the designing of the program that, you know, that's developmental, enables the participants to contextualize their own experience, incorporates lots of different learning styles and cultures, uh, something that's engaging, interactive, and enables that the participants to grow and develop their networks. So I think in terms mm -hmm. of parallels, there's quite a lot there in the, in the design of it. Um, in terms of the evaluation of it, I think this is, you know, many of our programs run over six months. And so within that would have maybe three modules, and um, three or four coaching interventions. So we get to see and measure our participants over a long period of time. And this is something I would identify as, as a little bit different. 
but really valuable to us in the context of developing senior talent. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and then in terms of that, that that delivery, you know, before the pandemic, Sionic delivered in person. So there would be more activity. And obviously, you know, the, the activity approach is very different to what we were doing at Outward Bound. But it's still that chance to problem solve and communicate as a team and work under time pressure and really kind of drawing out the behaviours more by the way that you engage with the teams and the way that you set up activities. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Is that, is that them bringing case examples to for discussion in that? Okay. That yeah, sense. yeah. Well, on the online world now, we do lots of case studies online, but in face-to-face, -face, okay. there would be case studies, but in person, you, you could, you know, you could do more icebreaker activities as well. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's okay. Uh, that, that, I mean, that sounds great, I, and it I, and it sounds great that you've been able to use that design, design skill that you developed. And I think the thing that really resonated to me that you then talked about there was about that contextualizing it for the learner. So which then, you know, with you talking about the six month programs for for your your kind of uh, current kind of clients, then then that really gives it uh, you know spe specificity if you like in that. Um, so I guess what you did start to pick up on uh in there was about the development of behaviors um so i'm just wondering you know thinking about behavioral development you, you obviously did an awful lot in your time with uh, mm -hmm. the apprentices and graduates i mean thinking about it now what's what what are the things that um you're looking to develop yeah you know, with those senior leaders and and how much kind of does that link into those young younger kind of early careers professionals yeah, I think that there's a there's a big link. Um, I could I could tell you that there's communication and there's teamwork and there's problem solving, which were a lot of the things that we kind of worked with and addressed uh, with early careers. They were part of the the frameworks. Uh, we do work with our own behavioural framework in in the way that we de develop people. But I would say that um, you know it's definitely operating at a slightly different level so that we're setting people up to become change agents within their organizations so we're building people up to enable system-wide change with deliberate strategies communicating at a more senior level um, giving presentations that um, are really key to how they drive forward strategies and solutions so in mm -hmm. terms of behaviors um, we're still um, working with communication, developing people, influencing, um, being proactive, but there's also a lot more around um, analysis and solution create, uh, creation, conceptual agility, um, wow. creating business value. So, um, you know, if you if you were to come and join us on a course, you might see some, some communication sessions and think, oh, that's quite the same, but actually in the context of um, the bigger picture of what we're developing, the end, the output, I think would be slightly different. Yeah, yeah, no. I, well, and and that, that that would make sense, I guess. People have matured, grown in their careers, and and are now operating at a much higher higher level, and and you know across much far far different teams than they will do in their early career. So again, yeah. a little bit of that contextualization. Um, so I'm just thinking then, uh, thinking about uh, what you know, as you know from from working as a a facilitator at Outward Bound, how is what we teach them through that learning through adventure um how how does that help them at later stage in their careers and i guess building on what you've just said there is there is there any things that you think actually a little bit more enhanced you know focus there would really help them for those uh challenges later on in their career yeah i think this is a real passionate area for me in terms of OB because I think often young people that go to OB they're in that kind of transition stage from education into the workplace um, but even if the apprentices are older often you can get many that have come from a military background so they're you know, mm -hmm. transforming uh, transitioning into the civilian life as well as that commercial world and so I think you know in terms of you know, being at the start of their career, I think it's it's just a really great platform to set up expectations on skills, knowledge and behaviour um, as they start to enter into that world of, of work. And I think one of the areas that was really kind of important to me was that chance to strengthen their identity. 
through this transition period. You know, we're moving from education, which is often see, seen as a kind of a child space, into the workplace, which is, a, is an adult space. Um, and, you know, and I think it strengthens that transition. It really helps, you know, by stepping outside of the comfort zone, having success, feeling mm -hmm. failure, getting that peer feedback. And I think this is where I saw a lot of, of real growth in, in young people coming through the Outward Bound courses. And then I think on top of that, you've got making friendships and allies as they start their careers, um, having that shared experience. And I think many people, you know, carry that with them into their adult life. But I think in terms of, you know, other things to, you know, think about that would, would serve them well, I think more thinking skills. Um, so thinking skills in terms of like divergent thinking, convergent thinking, that ability to really see the big picture and then zoom into the detail. Um, and I think equally, if you're someone that dives into the detail very quickly, if you're kind of... Um, if you're wired that way to kind of go straight to the detail, that ability to zoom out and see the big picture um, and looking at that impact to kind of both upstream and downstream of where you are. And I think okay. those kind of skills early on, again, I think it really adds into um, the, the, the world that they'll be going into. It's, it's kind of what's happening. And I think that's probably one of the big things I thought, oh, if I could go back, that's what I would take back with me, more, more yeah. thinking yeah 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 no i i, I mean I, I i remember having uh a mentoring conversation with somebody in in a in a learning and development setting very similar to that where they talked to me about moving to that helicopter position to just see what's going on around you and then choose you know kind of how to lead so uh, yeah, i completely resonate with what you, you said there and um yeah i think if we can yeah, you know, build that into to developing younger people at least as an abstract concept, perhaps because it's not necessarily yeah. something they would would get to use immediately. But at least as a concept, so that when they're, a situation arises, they might have the capacity to move to do that. Would be a, a great bit of feedback. So thank you for for, for thinking and, and, and building <laughs> that connection for us. That's we'll take that one, um, which is always good. Thank you, Sarah. Um, no, love, love, love that, really did. Um, so what, uh, I mean, so I, get, uh, so I guess then, okay, I'm just going off on a bit. No, actually, I wanted to dig into that identity piece, actually, that you said there. I'd like to just ask you to kind of add a bit more on that in terms of what, what you think could be done on the identity side for young people. I think it, I think a lot of it is being done, and that okay. that's that's one of the real strengths I see within the Outward Bound program. It's a lot of who am I? How do I fit in the world? Am I the same as everybody else? Uh, and I think that the way that programs are currently structured, you know, that peer feedback. I think a lot, you know, it's kind of setting up the activity, setting up the expectations, doing the activity, reviewing. And it's in that reviewing part, I think, that, that lots of magic happens. And then as these groups form at the end of the week, that, that peer feedback, I think, is so key because, okay. you know, you saw me do something good, you know, and it, the fact that it comes from a peer, I think, is really invaluable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're not, yeah, it, it, that's where you see people grow and I, yeah. I think you always know, yeah. saw people you know they leave they leave an inch taller than they arrive because they're just standing up proud of what they've achieved and I think then I think the process already starts to help form that that yeah. new identity yeah. as an adult in a workplace um or as somebody as who is who is a, an acknowledged part of a team mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I imagine there's uh, a real impetus uh, and professionalism needed um, from those young people giving feedback to other people to ensure that it's it's uh, both appropriate, constructive, and 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 relevant. Um, so as so as to do do what the intent is, which is help that young person grow. Yeah, and I think that's part of the skin of the facilitators is that yeah. it's not you don't just dive into it it's it's a process that happens all through the week and you're giving people opportunities to step up and step forward and stretch themselves and i think that yeah that peer feedback is the is the magic that happens at the end fantastic that's fab yeah great to hear um so i guess then you know we can't ignore the fact that we've we've been through a global pandemic over the last two years um so i guess within that i, I wonder you know what things have you seen change 
um, from a learning development perspective. Um, you know, and, and yeah, that maybe you know, you would point out a bound and go and have another look, little look at and dig a bit deeper on. Yeah. Oh, I think, I mean, I find myself talking more about time management, burnout, well-being, okay. um, having challenging conversations. Uh, and I think that, that that change to an online world has really benefited some, you know. I mean, I, I definitely have enjoyed it in some ways. But I believe that, you know, that, that lack of face-to-face -face time with colleagues over, over a longer period of time is just starting to have an impact. Mm -hmm. um, on how teams interact. So I think in terms of learning and development requirements and styles, I think there are more specific topics relating to working in an online world that we're now addressing. Um, and so I guess in terms of, um, you know, how that would relate, it would depend, in, you know, on the world that people are going into. But I think being prepared to go into an online world, I think it does present more challenges. And so more topics on how to manage that and, um, get those harder conversations right and inspire and motivate people when you're online <laughs> going back to back meetings. I think that's possibly one of the biggest changes that I've seen. Yeah, yeah, I know, definitely. And, and, and yeah, I think that's something we've had to work with lots of young people through the period where they've been learning very much in a virtual environment as opposed to learning in a, in a classroom-based environment. So, um, yeah. you know, learning appropriate behaviours from that perspective has been really important. I, I think even for myself, actually, Paul, you know, that context switching, constant context switching, you know, yeah. you're, getting, you're coming off one call, you're going into another, you're dealing with different bits of learning and being able to kind of contextualise that to, to, to be that context switch is, is, is exhausting. So being able to work in a way that's effective for how your brain needs to work over a long yeah. period of time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I definitely see that as an area that has changed yeah. the pandemic. Well, I, yeah, and I imagine also, I mean, there's a, I guess also to combat that burnout piece is also a bit of, um, you know, that self-care that's mm. been coming up quite a lot. So being more aware of when you need to take that, that moment to step away, go and have a walk or make sure you're doing something for you as well. So, yeah. you know, that, you know, yourself, what you at the core of where you're that? going. Yeah, when someone notices you in the in the office or you know, you're still at the coffee machine yeah. or the machine and you know you miss out on that on the visual cues that someone else might pick up on as well so it's that self-care but also that 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 compassion towards others that are around you i think it, yeah yeah no willing good. willingness to pass that hand out of hand isn't it i guess yeah, yeah. Uh, that's lovely um okay so then <laughs> you did touch on this earlier and i think you, you've clearly got um some wider wider awareness now um, within your role at Psionic of how to measure behavior, uh, measure development and behavior. Um, so I guess, you know, it's been a notoriously hard thing uh, in learning and development to do. But with, with your experience now, I guess, I wonder what tips you might have uh, for, for, for out of band customers who you know, send their young, young apprentices and graduates away on a week and, and you know, kind of don't necessarily come with them, but obviously get them back. How, how could they be um, measuring the results of their programs? What's, what's some of your insights? Um, I think there is one magical insight I will share with you that I think <laughs> that thinking back. Um, coaching circles. Coaching circles. So coaching circles, just bringing people together to talk and discuss. And I think it's just that chance for people to... Um, have developmental conversations within a safe space. So, mm -hmm. you know, working within a group and meeting uh, periodically to to have a set discussion uh, and to give people the opportunity to share any challenges that they might be having within this safe space. And then, and I think, yeah, to go with that, then I would say, you know, coaching, because then we're giving time. You know, so often, you know it's worth you know people thinking how often do you cancel a one-to-one -one because you might think you've got nothing to talk about how often do you reschedule mm -hmm. something because you don't but actually that time um to invest in someone that is going through a developmental stage I think is really crucial and you know as someone that coaches through um the modules that we deliver I mean some of the changes that that I see mm -hmm. I just feel really privileged to be a part of but I don't okay. really that they would happen if we didn't have that. So, you know, they'll work on, we'll have the one-to-one -one coaching and the coaching circles. So they, they, they're they different in what they offer the, the, the people, but um, yeah. And I think, and 
Jared. I was going to ask, and because I guess it's a little bit about measurement of that as well. Then, so so I can kind of get the concept of actually heightening that learning and 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 by getting those conversations to come and happen, it enables people to bring that alive and, and move it on. So, I, I guess I'm just, you know, with the measurement side of it, how does that how does that fit? I think it's you would it's I mean I don't know you can only measure it with the eye and your experience okay. of how you're interacting with that person so I think it would feed back into that overall end of year appraisal review you know organizations have yeah. a, a behavioral development matrix they're measuring against a set of criteria and so I think then yeah. you know by by talking around those behaviors throughout the year by the time you come to um to measure yourself and complete that that process um i think it might be more alive okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah no I, I i can see what you're saying i think it, it yeah it feels very much like keep keeping with what they've got and using this to really bolster and take it to that next level make sure that that transfer piece which is so important um really gets heightened um yeah, yeah. For, for, for those young people in their journey and, and 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 it's in doing that the evidence will be very much apparent so yeah thank you we will take that one as well <laughs> it's, a, it's a good session this isn't it no. <laughs> uh, great chat great chat it's um good. it's good to be able to kind of bring the two together I, I, I really think so actually yeah no it's it's uh, i mean that's i guess that's the value of having these open chats is to kind of pull those reflections that people have and and see where we can learn and, and take it forward for, for for the future um uh, so I, I'm, I'm i'm kind of then just I, I know you've got loads of great stories about individuals um and i'm just wondering then what what kind of stand out journeys or experiences have you got of the young people that you've worked with that really just you know sit, sit above others for you and i guess yeah a little bit about that and why would be really yeah. great oh this is often the bit where i get emotional um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna talk to you about one of that was specifically around behavior because that's a really big part of the topic that we're talking around today mm -hmm. and i think it's a really important thing so we're working with uh, a client. Uh, it was a financial. It was a financial organisation. Um, but uh, I was I was kind of co-working with someone with a colleague, and we'd gone out quite a small group. And the behaviour of one person was was just silly. And they they said to me, "Why aren't you challenging their behaviour?" And I said, "Well, what's going to happen if I challenge? What, what you know? I will be perceived as telling them off. So I'm kind of parenting." But what I'm going to do is let this play out because there's, there's no danger. There, there's no risk here. And later on, his peers can tell him what they think of his behavior. And that will have a really different, you know, different impact. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so the, the day was planned. We kind of canoed out down uh, Wasswater. And then we ditched the canoes and we walked back to the center um, over the hilltops through the night. So it was intended that we would walk through the night. And so the dynamics of the day is just shifted for people. And as the night drew in, people started to get a bit scared. They were a bit concerned. We were sleeping in a mountain hut. They, all of the kind of fears started to kick in. And out pops this, this young person, as confident as you like. And he's mm -hmm. like, I'm good with this stuff. I'm going to lead. If you're a little bit worried, just come and stand by me and I will look after you. And so it was a real turnaround from being giddy and silly and splashing and in the morning, letting that behavior play out and really kind of noticing how he naturally stepped up when things got really tough. Mm -hmm. In the feedback session, it all came out and he took some quite punchy feedback on his earlier behavior, but then how that really contrasted uh, in the afternoon and in the evening. But the magic of this story is that two weeks after that program, I got an email from him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. and he said I am so sorry for being such a plonker <laughs> and he said it wasn't until I got back to the workplace that I realized the deeper impact of the, my behavior and how that was affecting my team at work he said and it was because of that feedback that I got that I was really able to notice he said I have completely changed and the feedback that I'm getting at work now 
um, is just really positive. Wow. And so I think creating a space where people can explore and make mistakes, mm. not being too quick to shut things down and stop the, you know, stop the fairness and stop the behavior, allowing that space for people to, to be themselves in a safe space, I think can be so valuable. Um, he really got to explore the, 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 um, the best of himself and, and the not so best end of himself. Mm. But actually to feel that and experience it was so, so powerful for him that it had a really kind of profound impact on him when he got back to the workplace. So that, that, that's one. I mean, if you want more, I've got loads, but. Um... Uh, uh, well, I'm always keen to, to hear more, uh, Sarah, but I think, I mean, that, that one's just really powerful, I think, because of that, yeah, you could have nipped it in the bud at the start and and uh, you know as a facilitator it's having that that confidence just to let things play out which then enables that person to find their own path and you know and doing that through that peer feedback and then you know just yeah, having that deeper reflection so so much going on up in the, in your head it, uh, yeah you realize the the implications of other things in life i think i mean that that's one of the beauties i guess of learning through adventure and, and that's experiential learning and not being straight on to people to try and correct behavior but to 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 kind of enable it to surface and then to develop and grow but no, that, that that was fantastic um okay so yeah, I think we will hold it there on stories. I mean, maybe we can call you back in the future and get a few more. <laughs> um, but I think uh, I think um, what would also be really great, I guess, and, and this is a question we're asking to to everybody who's doing the campfire chat, is to I guess thinking about your journey where you've gone, um, what you're learning now with uh, at Psionic with some of the senior execs you're working with, I guess thinking about Outward Bound's core young people, so young people in education, young people in early careers, and their journey that they're about to go on, I guess, what are the three things that you would recommend that, you know, that they they take on board and, and do? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's quite hard to stop at three, but I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a really big world out there, you know, and we kind of, get funneled through a system and so you know then we we kind of break out into this world of work and so my that that kind of in between I would say set yourself a challenge that takes you out of your comfort zone sign up for something do something that that really makes you kind of feel that fear and step through and, and it doesn't matter if you if you succeed or fail just challenge yourself to do something that you possibly wouldn't have done before. And that could be really simple from, you know, taking cold showers to signing up for <clears> some <throat> kind of sporting event or challenge to doing a run or uh, anything. It doesn't have to be extreme. Um, and then I think as well, you know, kind of getting involved with a, with a charity or within a community, some kind of volunteering where you get that chance to meet people from all walks of life. Um, and I think that there's a chance there to learn about humility, compassion, perspective, and really kind of get an understanding of people, the different ways in which they think and operate. And um, yeah, and, and I, yeah, I think that's, that would be a one, another piece of advice. And I think probably linked to the first one is fail. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, don't be afraid to fail embrace failure, learn from failure, grow from failure. Um, and I think, you know, from a personal perspective, you know, I, I really value that one. I'd come through an education system. I'd gone to two boarding schools. Um, lots is done for you. And I, I remember, you know, someone has said to me, oh, you know, I don't know that you've ever failed at anything in life. Mm -hmm. When I take that through a kind of a learning experience, I mean, this was quite young, so I was able to correct it quite quickly. I realised that that was not a good thing. You know, so that, yeah. you know, at the time I was like, no, no, I haven't. But actually it wasn't a good thing because you, you miss out on the learning from that. And so go out and just try things and, and be prepared to fail and, yeah. and learn from that and grow. Uh, wow. 
uh, three three great um three great great points in life i think uh I, i'm kind of sitting reflecting on my own journey and and I, I, i'm yeah i've got ones like last year i did a skydive myself not quite to the level of, of adventure as walking on john o'groats to land's end but uh, a huge fear and and uh, yeah, it, it really does make you kind of look at things in a different way and see well what could I do now so uh, I love that one um, the volunteer working in your community I mean that's a key Kurt Hanian ethos piece of charity and compassion um, I love that and I think a frequent one that I hear from the team here at Outward Bound, you know, in terms of fail being very much the first attempt in learning um, is kind of quite the acronym that we often use. Brilliant, brilliant. No, that's some great advice. So hopefully people out there are listening. Uh, follow these wise words of, of Sarah Lowe. Well, Sarah, um, I think that kind of brings us to the end of our campfire chat. Uh, so I will say a huge thank you, as always. It's wonderful to catch up with you and to hear your words of wisdom. Uh, and I know there are will be many, many people who'll be watching this going, I remember Sarah and I remember some of those examples, you know, potentially that young man who, who had that very significant behavioral change piece for himself. So mm -hmm. thank you for all that you do and continue to do. Uh, mm. it, it means a lot. Um, Thanks, Paul. It's been it's been a real pleasure. I have to say, it's Outward Bound is somewhere that will always hold a really big space in my in my heart. In terms of the work that we were able to do there, in in how it developed me as a person. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a real privilege. And I think just kind of reflecting back on that journey is is yeah. is really wonderful. So thank you so much for kind of enabling me to do that. It's a pleasure, and and you'll always have a, a very firm hot part in our our hearts at Outward Bound, Sarah. And you're always welcome back whenever. <laughs> Not I'm trying to poach you uh, just to get that clear, but no, no, absolutely. It's a you know a really important thing in Outward Bound is about building great relationships, and clearly, um, yeah, that's that's one that has been built with you. So thank you, and thank you for your time today. Um, so that that's it from this campfire chat but i hope i can uh, we'll see other people at the future campfire chat so please tune in again in the future thank you very much sarah all the best Thanks,